My name is David Gran, and I wrote a story this week in The New Yorker about the case of Cameron Todd Willingham, who was convicted of setting a fire uh, that took place in 1991 that killed his three daughters, and he was executed for it in 2004. But as the piece shows, that fire investigation was riddled with flaws, and new evidence has come to light that there was no basis, scientific basis, uh, that he had set the fire or that a crime had ever even taken place. About a week after the fire, fire investigators poured over the house uh, looking for clues about what had started the fire. Uh, starting, you can see him moving through the kitchen. You can see the refrigerator that it, um, is blocking the back door exit, which investigators had cited as evidence uh, that it had been moved there to block anyone from escaping through the back door. Later evidence shows uh, that not to be true. You can see here the investigators looking at the deep burns on the floor. In general, fire burns upward, not downward. And so arson investigators had long believed if you saw deep char marks and burning along the floor, that was an indicator that somebody had poured an accelerant and so the fire had burned low down rather than moving upward. In October of 1990, a fire broke out on Lime Street in Jacksonville, Florida. A 35-year-old man named Gerald Wayne Lewis was found standing outside his house holding his son. Investigators later came in uh, and concluded that it was arson. The other people in the house had, had perished, and the man was charged with murder for intentionally setting the fire. Inside the house, they found many of the same patterns that were used to convict Cameron Todd Willingham. But some doubts began to emerge. The prosecution had asked uh, some of the top fire investigators in the country uh, to come in uh, and conduct an experiment. And what they did is they ended up using a condemned house uh, that was right next door to where the fire had actually taken place. And what they wanted to do was to test the theory uh, that Lewis claimed had happened, uh, which is that a ha the fire had taken place in the living room on a couch uh, and that it was an accident. They set the couch on fire and uh, they slowly watched the fire consume the couch in the living room. You can see this thick black cloud of thermal gases above the couch getting thicker. And suddenly, at four and a half minutes, you can see everything in this room suddenly ignite. What has happened is the fire has gone to what is called flashover. All the classic signs of arson that investigators had assumed were caused from somebody pouring a combustible liquid or a liquid accelerant on the floor had happened simply from the room going to flashover and what is called post-flashover. And what essentially happened with the Lime Street fire was it shattered all the prevailing notions of fire science and theories about arson. When the top fire investigators looked at the Willingham case, they realized that when the original investigators had come in and concluded that all this evidence were indicators of arson, that in fact they were simply the natural byproducts of a fire going to flashover and post-flashover, uh, and that there was no scientific basis for arson, that the 20 indicators that the original arson investigators had cited uh, were bogus. And there is a possibility that because of this, Texas may become the first state to acknowledge the execution of a legally and factually innocent person in the modern era.